Okay, I am. Um, it's uh, September 11th right now. Um, six something p.m. And uh, I, I just want to talk. You know what's the worst feeling that you can ever get? It's pointlessness. You know, feeling pointless. Feeling like everything that you're doing right now is pointless. And um, that's what I'm feeling right now. You know, school, everything's just, just pointless. And uh, yet I still have to go to school and it it sucks. I guess... But that's only the surface level of the problem that I'm facing right now. Um, I, uh, I, I have things that I really wanted to do at school. I guess you could say that. Like, I had hopes and dreams when I, when I entered the school. I thought, you know, one day I'm going to be this, I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to be that, I'm going to do that. And uh, school is going to be very wholesome. But it very much turned out the opposite way. I didn't do anything. And right now, even if I want to do something, I can't do anything. That's the worst part of it all. Is that I've been trying so hard to make myself useful at school. To be someone significant. To reach out and have a good wholesome school life you know at least have a have a nice ending you know but no matter how hard I try it always feels like I am never going to get a happy ending which is one of the reasons why I'm just very very sad about school and since there really isn't much in life other than school you know my my life yeah school school occupies like 90 percent of my life and school is very important to me school is life you know everything other than school like say listening to music watching movies making my youtube videos uh traveling everything is just you know pretty miscellaneous I guess that's the word, but school, school is the most important thing to me. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, you know, I was pretty happy today until I did the Chinese test. And, uh, we, you know, it's basically one and a half hours long. We have to uh, finish around 20 pages, I think, of, of uh, Chinese test. There are three sections. For section A, we need to... Um, answer trivial questions about six different passages that we studied in the past and then after that it's one passage with normal Chinese and another passage with normal Chinese that's a little shorter and then for the last section it's uh, a passage but with ancient Chinese like classical Chinese and for the uh, for the passages and sections B and C it's about making friends uh these passages are basically um you know you know they talk about you know how you should value your friends and you know be happy with what you have and then as i was doing the paper i thought to myself yeah i should value friends if i have them And I just keep thinking and thinking and thinking. And I realized no matter what I do, it's not going to matter because I'm leaving Hong Kong anyways, you know, in like um, a few months or so. So all, even if I do actually make friends in Hong Kong, what's the point? I'm going to go to some other country anyways and abandon all of my previous friends and feel alone all over again. Second of all, 
if you want to make friends with someone, you need time. Okay, you need to be at first. You're like you know normal schoolmates. Then you talk a little bit to each other. You you know talk more and you learn more about each other. You care more about each other and you understand what each other's uh, what 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 each other is think is thinking. And then uh, you start you know having fun with that person and uh, stick with that person and then you're friends and. To make friends with someone, it takes a very, very fucking long time. And I am a few months away from leaving Hong Kong, so even if I want to make any friends, I can't. And trust me, I, I, like since the beginning of year five, aka eleventh uh, grade, um, yeah, eleventh grade, uh, I've tried. My very best to make as many friends as possible, and for some reason, it's like I can't. It's like something's blocking me, something's disabling me. And I did try to reach out. I did try to talk to all sorts of different people, and none of them seemed to be interested at being my friend. I guess I'm not a very interesting person because, other than music and movies. I I'm not that interesting. Like I, I guess I don't know. I I don't know. I guess I'm not a very interesting person. Nobody's interested at making friends with me, but I did try. And the whole thing I'm in, the whole situation I'm in, it's just very very depressing. You know. In fact, today after school, I just kept thinking about how I have little to no friends. Like a few to no friends. I kind of cried a little bit, like, like just a little bit. Like I just don't really understand. Like, like even people like Russell, you know, like Russell and Natalie, they actually they actually talk to each other about you know secrets and all that. And Russell would look for Natalie to talk to her about things because a she's interesting, b she's useful, c she knows a shit. Uh, when I'm to everyone else in this world, I am basically this unimportant side character, or maybe just an extra in the background. I am so insignificant and so unimportant. It's actually astonishing. You know, I the, the the most important I've ever been is um, I was the uh, master of ceremony, a host. Of a ceremony of um, the open day of uh, the school, and then after that happened, everybody seemed to have forgotten about me again. I don't know if it's really my fault. Like, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, or is you know this basically how the society works? Um, but. Uh, no matter how hard I try, no matter what I do, no matter what I say, nobody is interested in me. So I, I was always in this cycle of, fuck it, I'm gonna be alone forever. I'm just, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna lock myself in my bedroom and wait until I die. And then suddenly, oh hey, you know what? I should, I should really just try to make friends. I should, I should really just go out there. And then. Oh, never mind. I'm not interesting, anyways. Nobody really wants to talk to me. Nobody really wants to care about me. And then, back to fuck it. I'm locking myself in my bedroom again. So it's just this cycle over and over and over again for for three fucking years. It's been like I honestly don't know how did I manage to to be in this situation. Okay, maybe it's really my fault. Like I I didn't join enough. Clubs or societies or activities、uh, when I was、uh, younger, you know, I didn't make it strong enough of a first impression. I mean, okay, I have to admit it could be worse. You know, right now, I could be in a worse situation. I could be even more unpopular. At least the people in my class right now sort of、uh, acknowledges my existence, so that's a good thing. But Still, if I compare myself with 
literally any other person in the class except for Nick. Uh, I'm, I'm really unimportant and, un and insignificant. And, you know, same goes for Nick, of course. Um, but he doesn't really care. Uh, but I care. You know how Natalie would express her feelings to uh, Kingsley? Uh, the boy who's good at everything and who knows everything. He's tall, smart, handsome, strong. He has tons, like shit tons of friends. He knows like shit tons of secrets. And Natalie, even Natalie, someone as secretive and as edgy and as cryptic as Natalie would go to Kingsley just to tell him her feelings. And according to Natalie, it would actually work. And now Kingsley literally sits right beside me. Uh, so, uh, if I am not as deep of a person as Natalie, do you think Kingsley would be able to understand me and help me with the situation that I'm currently stuck in? Normally, normally you would think so, okay? Normally, you would think so. But uh, something's just keeping me from telling him that I'm in this fucking stupid situation of constantly being in a, in a, in a state of desperate for care, you know? Maybe he won't understand because he's literally the opposite of me. He's handsome, he's smart, he's fast, he's strong, he has a lot of friends. Meanwhile, I'm ugly, I'm weak, I'm slow, I'm, um, I, I have, like, so few friends. And not many people understand me, not many people really care, not many people look up to me. I'm not that interesting, I'm not that cool, I'm not that important of a person. People look down on me almost, but look up to Kingsley. And Kingsley's literally right beside me. But yeah, oh my gosh, you know, I... I'm in a, like, like, you know, I'm in a really teary mood right now, and that's perfect for the Brockhampton album review. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's talk about something a little happier, about what happened on my birthday, September 7th. Here we go. Let's go. So, uh, uh, oh yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about something that, uh, Th that doesn't necessarily make me super happy, but I'm still a little pleased with it because I'm a really pitiful person. It was September 7th. It was my birthday. And I woke up early and I left early because I had to go to school early so that I could arrive at the biology lab at uh, before eight o'clock and I arrived there like 30 minutes earlier and I saw Grant I saw uh, a bunch of other people and it was it was pretty cool we were about to go to a field trip okay we were about to go to uh, I guess the one only field trip that we're ever gonna go to in our school lives and that is uh, we're going to a, a river in the middle of a, of a country park and we would uh, run tests and check out plants and animals and uh, we would, uh, yeah, we would, it's for biology, you know, biology project. And uh, I, I'm, I fucked up because, you know, we were going to go into the damn river and we have to immerse our body into it. And uh, I forgot to bring another pair of shoes. So I only have one pair of shoes. I have to go into that river with that pair of shoes. And then I have to walk. You know, like I have to go back to school in, that, in those shoes. I have to go back home in those shoes as well. Uh, but fortunately, uh, even though Queenie wasn't here, which is a bit of a letdown, Mary's here and she's an interesting person. Uh, so... Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, at first it seems like you know I'm I'm getting the hang of it, 
Nick wasn't here, so I didn't talk to Nick at all because he wasn't even there. I talked to, you know, Grant and Ronald and Oliver. And uh, we went on to the school bus. The school bus is driving us to the country park. And uh, nobody sat with me. Yeah, so it was a little awkward, but you know, I didn't mind it because it's not the first time. I am unpopular. Anyway, we arrived at the country park. And on the way, when we walked from the, uh... Anyway, we arrived at the entrance of the country park. And as we walked from the, from the entrance to the river, uh, I was a little more social again. I talked to Oliver, I talked to Kingsley, I tried to hang out with them, talk to them, you know. And, uh... Yeah, I just, I just talked to them. You know, I just realize that it doesn't work. If I just talk to people, people still won't care about me. Uh, anyway, I talked to people and we arrived at the river. I took off my socks and wore the shoes. Uh, and uh, I just went in into the river, into the damn river. The water was cold, but later on I sort of uh, got the hang of it. So me, Oliver, Ronald, Andy, and Dean, we were in the water and we measured stuffs. We caught a small fish and it was actually a lot of fun like I had fun and uh, you know even though not like people really care about me in school at least they didn't completely ignore me uh, like when they are having fun like they would ask like sometimes they would ask me for help so I would help them a little bit I would you know have fun play with them a little bit but yeah and directly behind us, uh, there's a small little bridge. And on one side of the bridge, it's us. And then on the other side, a little bit more downstream, it's Mary's group. With Selena, Suki, Iris, and uh, a couple other girls. And uh, Mary's such a mood, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, when the girls, they, they were catching the fish and something happened and all of them were screaming like ah you know mary was just like a little bit at the side just staring at them smiling a little bit and she's not interested in screaming or doing anything like like she's a little you know like a little you know not as open not as all out maybe a little secretive maybe she doesn't like being wild maybe she likes to maintain her mysterious persona I guess but yeah anyway uh, on the shore uh, beside the river there was a table full of um, full of just tests like test solutions test kits uh, test papers different gadgets and little you know plastic tubes and plastic boxes and we had to uh, take a sample of the river water and we have to run tests, you know, to check the oxygen concentration, the nitrate concentration, ammonium concentration, the pH value, the, uh, the turbidity, uh, whatever. And when I ran the tests, Mary was there. And then at one point when I was just doing the tests alone, uh, Mary literally came to me and stood at my right and there was a worksheet that I was you know filling the data on you know I was writing the test results on this piece of worksheet she came to me and you know I wasn't writing at that point I was holding a plastic tube but she was she was like one centimeters beside me she was so close I could almost feel her breathing like a thought <laughs> yeah uh, and she didn't even talk to me she just she she stood there and I just after like a few seconds like I didn't just straight up dash off and say be gone saw I stayed there for like six seven seconds and then I just slowly backed off and very smoothly like naturally backed off as if I'm, I'm being threatened by um, by an organism that's clearly on a higher level. You know, it, it 
baffles me that even people like Iris and Shayla and, and a couple of their friends and people like Daryl who's also in C class, even they talk to me, okay? They don't know me as well as Mary knows me because Mary and I were in the same class during sixth and during seventh and eighth grade. Uh, but Mary said zero words to me, even though we were one centimeters close, even though I could feel her breathing. Like, Mary didn't even speak to me at all. So that was a little disappointing. You know, at one point, uh, and, uh, you know, we were given trays, trays of tools and instruments to, you know, do measurements. And in that tray, I found, like, in the trays, I found magnifying glasses, which is fucking awesome because I am the fucking detective. And this is my tool, okay? Uh, the magnifying glass. So I was playing around with the magnifying glass. It was sunny that day, so I, I literally shone a, a light and focused it with the magnifying glass and focused the beam of light on, on my hand so it, it feels really hot, like a burning sensation. Oliver saw it. And uh, Oliver, like I gave Oliver my magnifying glass, he asked for it. And then Mary popped up out of nowhere. And Oliver started trying to concentrate the sunlight onto Mary's skin. And her skin was so flawless. It was like very moist, very clean, very innocent. Not a single scar, not a single cut, not a single whatever, you know. And Oliver concentrated the beam of light on her hand, but he failed. So I told Oliver to face the magnifying glass against the sun. And then it worked. M Oliver managed to, to burn Mary, basically. Almost. And after like half a second, Mary immediately takes back her arm and, and hits like, like a really gentle, like, like, like a like a like this kind of hit uh she very tenderly hit oliver and then just smoothly swagged and swifted away so that was that was something i guess like i helped oliver burn mary i guess that's something i don't i don't fucking know it means nothing if that shit happens in in like form two in like seventh grade it, it means nothing but to me right now it means a lot i don't i don't fucking know why maybe it's because i'm too lonely of a person but yeah anyway next page uh yeah uh we went back to uh school okay what's wrong with my nose we went back to school and on the school bus i sat with marty and marty doesn't seem to like me like Marty, he just doesn't want to talk to me, so whatever. Uh, but uh, for some miraculous reasons, me and Marty were invited to go to Oliver's home. I was invited. Usually, I just follow along and see what happens. Uh, but I was invited. Like, that's a first, you know? That's a first. And not invited for, you know, homework or something. Like, legit invited. And uh, they, um, so yeah, uh... Me and the boys, we bought some uh, polystyrene boxes of rice. We went to Oliver's apartment, and uh, we had lunch, and it was it was weird. Uh, the boys they kept on burping and farting, farting, and it was disgusting. Marty saw it. Marty isn't in you know, Ernest and uh, and uh, Oliver and Kingsley and Grant and Andy and Edward's gang. So Marty's kind of kind of a newbie too. Marty saw that the, all the boys are burping and farting. Marty sort of followed, but I didn't because I I have a style, you know, just like Mary said. Uh, but you know, I still managed to fit in a little bit, I guess. After lunch, I literally sat down and watched people play a Chinese board game for three hours straight, and uh, it's mahjong. I don't know why it's called that, uh, but I, I watched them play a Chinese board game for three hours straight. And at first, that was really awkward because I didn't know how to play. I I, I, I don't know anything. 
Uh, I sat with Oliver a little bit, talked to him a little bit, joked around a little bit. Then I sat with Grant a little bit. Uh, I joked about, uh, you know, the, the, the board game and it was pretty funny. And then after that, I went home, took a shower, filmed the Tool album review, then went back out again and went to a, a, a Greek and Middle Eastern restaurant in Central and had dinner. And it was actually really nice. It was actually a pretty fantastic dinner. And all of my aunts, like all two of my aunts were there. After the dinner, me and my second aunt went to a very obscure, small little theater uh, far, far away. And uh, we watched the movie Parasite, Gi uh, Sang Chung. Gi Sang Chung. Uh, the South Korean film and it was a, it was a surreal movie it was twisted it was intense it was beautifully tragic and I love it it's the best movie I've watched in the year so far like like 2019 movie and so uh, September 7th was great it was it was pretty great it was one of the better days of the year anyway next Monday uh, it was September 9th and nothing important really happened. I'm looking at the time now because I'm running out of time. Nothing important really happened on September 9th. Uh, I had to stay behind after school al alongside with like 20 other people because I still haven't handed in my maths homework. So we had to stay behind and do it, but I still haven't finished it as of this moment right now. So that's bad. And uh, I did, you know, and Pink also had to stay behind. So me and Pink, we actually talked a lot. And uh, yeah, and uh, anyway, uh, we had to stay behind in 6C classroom, aka Mary's there. And Pink literally sat beside Mary for uh, a period of time. And then when, and then after Mary left, uh, Pink told me to sit with her, sit in front of her. So I did, and uh, that's it. But, you know, again, it baffles me. Even in C-Class, some boys in C-Class also talks to me. While Mary doesn't? Maybe, I, I actually have a theory now. Maybe Mary just likes perfect people. You know, people who are beautiful, nice skin, cute personalities. Uh, and, and I'm pretty much not cute. Uh, my skin is pretty much flawed, uh, very flawed indeed, and my uh, the things I've done is cringy. It's ugly. It's it's something to be ashamed of. Maybe that's why Mary doesn't want to talk to me at all because I am uh, a very flawed man to begin with. If I ever do make friends with Mary, which is insane. The first thing I would tell her is that uh, I'm imperfect, so don't expect anything from me. Uh, but yeah. Also during maths class, I forgot to bring my book. So I just, so Jordana actually told me to sit with her, which is a good sign, I guess. Uh, and Jordana tried really hard to find like a, like a topic uh, so that we could chat. And all she could think of is, you know, school work and you know going to the USA for university and college and all that good stuff uh, all right up next September 10th it's Cedric's birthday shout out to Cedric and nothing important really happened uh, there was a sports class and we didn't do sp oh, actually we did uh, before we did sports and sports class uh, we have the option to, uh, you know, uh, apply for, uh, you know, things in the uh, aquatic meet, the swimming gala in our school, and, uh, you know, the annual swimming gala. And, of course, Natalie, uh, uh, she applied for being an announcer, and I did too, so that I could talk to her. And I also really want the entire fucking school to listen to my fucking voice. Uh, because I'm an attention-hungry son of a bitch. Um, yeah, you know, don't take what I just said in complete face value. Uh, but yeah, and I also said um, if I can't be an announcer, I'm gonna be uh, an electrician, you know, electric board manager. I shouldn't have said it. 
I shouldn't have said it. I should stick with. Uh, I should have stuck with announcer. Uh, anyway, uh, something insane happened. Okay, something insane happened. Uh, I I forgot to bring my laboratory coat and uh, goggles, safety goggles, for a chemistry uh, experiment laboratory test thing. What the heck is this? And so I I, tr I asked Josh. Jack, who sits beside me in maths, and, and and he said he doesn't have it, and then so I asked Tyrus, and he has it, and he agreed to borrow it to me, except they have to use it in the second last, no, they have to use it in the third last class, and I have to use it in the last class. So in between the third last class and the second last class, I sneaked out of my classroom and and waited outside of the chemistry lab while trying to hide from my English teacher. So the second the people in the chemistry lab comes out, uh, which includes Tyrus, I could get it from him and then sneak back into uh, 6A, my classroom. So I did it and it actually worked. And Mary's also in the bunch, so there's that. But uh, afterwards, um, a lot of people from the chemistry lab also went to the back door of 6A, so I really didn't have to do that, but uh, whatever, it was fun, it was fun. And then, uh, yeah, in the, in the last class, we had to do uh, the chemistry laboratory test. It was fucking difficult. I barely had enough time, but it was fun. So, you know, even though I may fail, it was fun at least. I, I tried really hard, like I was panicking in the beginning because I was trying to be as fast as possible. Actually, I forgot to mention, um, let's think of a fake name, Tanya. So, when I was waiting outside of the chemistry lab, secretly, Tanya came out of the chemistry lab and asked me if I had the test later. I said, yes, I will have the test later. And she told me to work faster. So, thanks to her, I guess. But uh, yeah, why... Mary wouldn't do something like that because, hey, I'm a flawed person. Why would she talk to me? 